Hey YouTube, so today we're going to explore and tour the Fort Caswell Coastal Artillery Batteries. Um, as you can see they were built to provide for our national defense with consideration for modern... Well, uh, anyway, these were built way, way, way. They were actually at one point Confederate for the Confederate Army and then later on for the Union um, as time has changed. So we're going to go through and tour them. You can see what a old military base was like. All right. So, don't know what this room is, but uh, later on we'll try to find a map and see what we got going on. Obviously, some type of storage room, more storage room, probably for guns or something. Got some steps here. As you can see, I think at one point we probably had some cannons or something bolted down here. Um, oh. Great overview. What a view. Now we're on top of the battery. Um, again, as you can see, I think they had cannons located up here on top of these things. And they could shoot all type of weaponry out into the ocean from this point. You see that ocean back in there? That's the Atlantic, Atlantic Ocean there. And when we come back over on this side, you have the Cape Fear River that comes down just beyond those buildings there. So, you can see that water in the background behind the buildings. That's the Cape Fear. And we turn a little bit, and then that's the Atlantic. And that over there, I believe is Ballhead Island. So, mission for tour. And there's looks like there's like four or five different sections of this. Um, we're going to tour the other portion in a little bit. Not sure what this was for. Round. Oh, no, he's coming up now. 
Let's do this again. What are y'all playing? Murder in the dark. Who? Murder in the dark. Oh, okay. Who's the murderer? Um, the boy in the blue shirt. How do you play murder in the dark? So they chase you, and if they tap you, you die. And then the healer, which is like her, will come and heal you. And then you... you oh, is that why she's walking? So she's like, oh, uh, I'll just heal whoever. <laughs> Now can someone can someone hurt the healer? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah, you can get killed as a medic. If both medics die, then the game's over. Oh, okay. So you have to stay away from the murderers, basically. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So whenever someone dies, you say, help, medic, help. Is that it? Yeah. Or, you know, shoot a text. I shoot a text. <laughs> this modern game, huh? <laughs> oh, okay. I have to try that sometime. We have some steps here that go down. Let's see what we got down here. Ooh, tree in the way. Another dark room. These dark rooms are probably for, for storage or something. This is not really big enough to watch anything else. Whoa, that's dark. didn't bring my flashlight, so I can't show you how far back that goes. We'll pause the video and turn on the light. All right, now that we got the light, as you can see, it's, it's rather neat. It'd be a good place to shoot a horror movie. Oh, look at that. All right, so you got... I guess that's for air or something. It's kind of neat because, I mean, I don't know what that would be for but or what that would be for. But uh, obviously this room is probably some type of storage. Might be the, a repacking room or something. As you can see, they would have a door that would lock that off good. Mm. Another one here. And of course, we come out to the front. Yeah, you don't want to jump down there. <laughs> The storage room. More storage rooms. Of course, back in the day when this was actually a fort, it could have been like the general's office or anything. <laughs> Then we have these big dome pieces. Not really sure what those are. It's probably looks like like water storage or something. I have to do some research on that. Well, that's flooded, and it's got allergy on it. And I'm not going to walk through that because I have on skelly toes today. I don't want to get my feet exposed to that. But that is a corridor or hallway or something down through there. Oh, excuse me. A lot of this stuff is kind of repetitive. It's the same thing over and over again. I'm in a different section of the fort, but as you can see, it's still kind of set up. It's like they had modules and boom, 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 different modules.
That's a serious drop right there. I'll see if I can get down there and figure out what's doing that. Got some kids out here that are playing that game. So they're heading all over the place. That'd be a great spot for a Halloween party or scary. <laughs> then again, you see, I just came down the steps and it all looks the same, but there again, we are in a different part of the fort. So it's like it repeats itself as far as the building, uh, like four or five times, probably six different times. Well, one, two, three, four. I'll say four or five different times. So this is one part. This is where we came in in the beginning. So now we're going to walk over to the other portion of Fort Caswell. Again, I would go down in there, but I don't have any boots on. Don't want to get any type of sickness from that allergy. It would be interesting to go see what's behind that wall, though. Oh, well. That's an overview of the fort, this portion of it. Alright, we're going to walk over to the other portion of it. It's in the sun, so we'll pick up when I get there. And as you can see, it's like the fort is built behind a big berm, which is that there, and there's the fort. Um, we'll walk up over it on the top in a minute, but that goes all the way around it. I guess that's why the hell they were able to raise it up, raise up the land so that they could see out into the ocean. Of course, way back in the day, the tree line probably wasn't there either. Got a pool, kiddie pool, adult pool. Looks like it goes up to nine feet. Oh, that water looks good, too. All right, so here's the other part of the fort. And as you can see, it's built into the side, or it looks to be built into the side of a big hill. They probably built the hill after they put the fort up. No telling. I'll have to do some research on that. This one has a little more detail in it. I don't know if this was a firing battery or not. Galvanized roof. It's got some hold it up in there. Another storage room. Yeah, if I'm not so some God that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> that was a bird. <laughs> Okay, alright, so as you see we have looks like a window. Ah. This may have been like a a prisoner cell or something back in the day. Oh that freaking bird. Get this shit out of me. 
Alright, so then we have another darker, deeper hauled room. That's pretty far back. Oh, I guess the other side here. And there you can see where we were just now with the bar gates. That big door here, too. Now, obviously, they stored something heavy in here because you see that line at the roof there? It goes around. That kind of reminds me of maybe um, a hoisting system or something where they could move stuff and pick it up, not necessarily have to do. Not necessarily have to carry it. Shit. Another dark room. It goes in rather deep. Okay, it's got like the hangers on the wall there. I'm not gonna go back there. This place kinda gives me the creeps. That's one section. Here's the outside view of what we were just in. I'll try to get a map or a picture of what this thing used to look like. And that way it'll give us an idea of what all these little buildings and coves were. Another small storage room. Now this is interesting. It just looks like it might be a, been like a guard shack or something. Uh, or maybe it was a for punishment or something. I don't know. That's kind of weird. Because you've got three ports there, nothing over there in the back, and you've got a steel door. This may have been some type of crude brig or or a uh, jail cell or something. All right. Nice heavy duty doors. That door's probably whew, from like the Civil War. <sighs> Ancient stuff. Again, you'll notice, you see that track on the ceiling there? So maybe they were carrying, moving heavy stuff out of here too. Which, when I say heavy stuff, we're probably talking about cannonballs. I think they said they used this thing up until like World War One. Maybe, maybe World War Two they used it, so they could have had all type of modifications and storage and stuff. Here's another room, and you'll notice, just like on the other side, there's a door with a gate. Well, well there's a, there's a um, bar window. This one actually still has the door up. Imagine how old that piece is right there. Wow. Same way with this wood. It's like some ancient stuff. <laughs> okay, so this one we have numbers on the thing. Two, three, four, five, eleven. Another room. And I bet it's going to be set up like what we just previously looked at when we went around. Yep, it sure is. See the bar window? That's where we just were. It almost seems like they had a design and they just kept replicating that design for the building over and over again. It's going to be interesting to do the research to see what they stored in these particular buildings or to see what these buildings were used for. And again, as you see, this looks exactly like it looked on the other side over there. And up front we have another port. I just don't know what this is for. It's 
got the three windows that are you can obviously see in and out but it's got the steel door well this one doesn't have the steel door on it's been removed a battery bagley built in 1889 used until 1903 it was disarmed mid 1920s so they used it until 1903 left munitions here and finally took them away in 1920s hmm. Hmm. and again what old explorer is like oh that's the one difference there's some steps on the top of that there oh there's some steps on the top of that so possibly those steps came down before uh, yeah. another small room That'll come over here. Yep. It's a little bit different setup, though. Because you'll notice this is a little smaller, and of course, the room goes around. And I bet it comes over here to the room with the bar window. Sure does. But this room is different. Notice you have that in the floor. And let's see. And also look at the trough. Remember when I said this is probably used to move some heavy stuff? Well, there's a path cut out deep already there for it. So I guess in the 1920s we were probably using a lot heavier bombs and weapons. And uh, they used a probably a newer setup of this particular building here. sides we have oh something different a fireplace huh now this must have been like the general's office or captain's office or a uh, higher officer and here another fireplace let's know uh, what that's for I'm gonna go back in the back here I have another room this is the only place in this whole thing where I'm sitting in my fireplace. Oh, and these must have been the restrooms. They look like stalls. <laughs> um, oh no, this is the showers. Okay, wow, look at that. There's the showers. There's your water line. It's supposed to be where your shower head was at one point. Shower head there. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, all right. Crude, I don't see a, that probably is, I guess it's right over there, a drain for it. So we had a shower room here. And I guess there's an officer quarters next there. So maybe this was the living quarters, I guess. Uh, nice here. All right, we're gonna walk up to the last section of this thing. I think there's one more section too on the other side. We'll get to that in a little bit. We're gonna walk to this and we'll be right back. All right, so this is the, actually this is the first part of the fort when you're coming through the gate at Fort Chiswell. This is the first thing you're gonna see. I guess I kind of did it in reverse. But either way. What do we have here? A room? Kind of weird, the roof is shorter in this room as opposed to the other ones. So we have a room, and we'll go over to the next one. Now that's interesting there, the way they built that. A little bit of cubby hole in there. We have a triangular room. And another square room, all with a short roof. <laughs> all right. You can put on the side there. We're gonna walk around. Yeah. 
All right, so I'm guessing there's probably a big cannon turret here. You see how this is kind of round. And if you look all the way around, you have a good clear view of the ocean. Okay, so if there are any threats coming in, out from this point and see anything approaching the coast and now I see the way this thing is set up they could actually start attacking here as they came off come off the Atlantic and of course you wouldn't want your enemy to go up your coastline there because that's the Cape Fear River that comes back over in here so now I understand why they have a fort here that's probably a gun turret there too gun turret there too don't know how far these turrets could shoot out back in the day but you got a fort right here shooting out, and then you got one up there shooting out to keep people, keep the enemy from going up the Cape Fear River. All right, and the smart thing about this is you'll notice there's a berm all the way around. I don't know if they ever used this fort or ever attacked in it, but you notice there's a high hill natural barrier in front of the fort. See how the fort's built into it? You can't even really tell. If I was over there, you wouldn't even know there was a fort there. Oh, yeah. I think Wilmington's back over that way somewhere. Anyway, um, so if cannonballs were to be shot off of a ship, they're going to come in and hit the ground, keep the fort intact. You see that big tree line there? That's the other fort that we just toured a little while ago. I guess it's grown up a lot more than what it originally had back in the day. But this is a really nice, beautiful, quiet area. And there's a lighthouse. And it does work. All right, so here we are on the other side of the fort. And you'll notice it's a natural berm I was talking about. And you can't even tell. But when we get to the top, you'll see the fort. Uh, whew, that's a hill for you. And back to the board. Beautiful views. Okay, here's the other part. Neat little steps here. Probably another garden tort is here. Now we're getting more over toward where the river, mouth of the river is. Again, you see the natural berm around it. See if we can go inside this.
Put some all in. Probably storage in there. Not telling what this was. Looks like it was big time storage actually with those big doors and probably two cannons. All right, we'll get to the first part. Okay, now this portion is different from all the rest. It's really big, long. but not forgotten. Following the Civil War, Fort Caswell entered into a caretaker period of the U.S. Army for a number of years. During that time, the condition of the remaining third system fort and its support structures deteriorated further. Despite this, the site would not be left unused forever, and eventually Fort Caswell became a bustling center of activity as the Army took a fresh look at the, this important point of defense. From the Inspector General before I of the work, is now... This is talking about how bad the fort had, um, had gotten. Okay, so then we have new construction. Now these were the various ones we went to. We toured this, we toured that, that, just did that. And I guess now we're getting ready to do this and probably that. All right. Supplied with 12 inch and 10 inch breech loading rifles as well as submarine mines to be laid in the channel. I wonder if there are any mines in that channel now. Hope not. The new era in artillery. Caswell's big guns. Largest guns ever mounted at Fort Caswell were in emplacement one and two of battery. Caswell, the concrete structure built on the remains of the masonry masonry fort behind this sign. The photo above is one of the actual guns on Battery Caswell. There were 12 inch rifles mounted on bar brake carriages which allowed them to be effectively hit targets at a range of 8 miles? 8 miles? Using a thousand pound projectile, though many of the guns at Fort Caswell were taken away during World War I for service in Europe. The 12 inch guns remained until the post was deactivated and totally disarmed in the early 1920s. Wow, that's a serious gun. Okay, you see those turrets we were in? All right, that's where, all right, see how it was circular? And then the gun sat on that turret that rounded a 12 inch rifle on a disappearing carriage. It's fired by a lanyard. Many of Fort Castle guns were mounted on similar carriages that could be raised and lowered to make, oh, okay, so they could raise and lower the guns. All right, fire control position. So one of these rooms we went in was a fire, fire control room. There's an observation room. Okay, that's what it kind of looked like back in the day. In the 1920s, the property was sold to private developers who sought to transform the former military post into an exclusive resort. One of the selling points for this resort was an artesian spring on canvas that is geothermally heated. The new owners opened up the Christens outside of the former, uh, the former officer's house and used the spring water to convert them into soaking tubs for their guests. At the outbreak of World War II, the developer sold the property to the U.S. Navy. The photo right shows the swimming pools at approximately this time. Oh, so they had a swimming pool? There's two of them. Looks like it was on top of the daggone, um... Oh, that's probably where the gun turrets were. They made them into swimming pools. Okay. However, they were 
made a decision to pour walls to close in the backs so of the gun and place the number one into a back house so that the water could be pumped to the old gun and try to transform them into swimming pools. That is rather neat. <laughs> All right, let's tour this before it gets too dark. Oh. Various guns, 10 inch, eight inch. This is a rifle. That's that 20 pound rifle. All right, there's your distances. And how far they can shoot out there. So they can shoot at farthest 3.5 miles. Tour. See those little gun turrets down there? That's where the rifles were. Those big long rifles they were talking about. They could stick them out through there and aim whichever way they needed to. Seems a little low. And we go to Fort Caswell. All right, so there's water and I don't have on wet wear. The shoes, so we won't be going down in there. Okay, we got into the inside. Fort Caswell. Ha! That is really neat. Okay, this I believe is where they said they filled in the two walls here and they uh, put the swimming pools in there. It's a little too dark for me to be going inside there. I don't have a flashlight on. And I don't want to run into anybody living, well, anything living in here, you know. How that sort of stuff goes. That bird scared the heck out of me earlier. Oh, this is so cool. Won't be going down through there. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but there is light at the end of that tunnel. This is where the pools were. Let's see if we can get up there to that. Steps. <laughs> All right, that's where they had the pool. <laughs> How neat! <laughs> Just by filling in the wall. Another 
drop down. Serious drop down there. All right, that's kind of built up and it's got a brick wall all the way around it. Oh, okay. Really can't jump off of it, but you can see very good around it. More rooms. Another deep room. A couple of deep rooms. Hmm. Another deep room. I thought that's for. So, this is Fort Caswell on the inside. And as you see, it, like all the other buildings here, they just kind of repeat the structure. You know, it's like doubled. Even the layout of the rooms is the same. And as you can see, it's covered with the natural ground there. And we got one last building. This will be all of the fort buildings. I think we have a lookout um, building up here on the corner. Yeah, this is probably two more cannon turrets. These are facing kind of like right here at the mouth of the river. Yep, you can see the steps leading up to the cannon turret. Right here it was a cannon, see how it was bolted down. And there's the lookout post. Again, another cannon tower. More storage. I'm not going in there, and that's kind of deteriorating. Oh, this is different. I wonder what that little room was for. Probably a sentry post or something. You have steps to go up to, of course, another cannon tower. And as you can see here, that's the mouth of the river right there. <laughs> or going into the mouth of the river. There's a cannon tower there. You see they tore that up. It's coming around.
Well, that concludes the tour. Hope you enjoy it, YouTube. Rather historical place here. And uh, if you get a chance, come down and check it out. See those uh, metal spikes? Metal spikes, that's what they use to, they actually use screws, that's what they use to bolt the cannons down. See, that cannon bolted down there too. This was your lookout spot right here. Oh, which, of course, you could probably shoot out of it too. You know? mm. Pretty neat. All right, until next time, YouTube. If you have any questions or comments, please post, chat, subscribe, and um. Um, join me on my next adventure when we go exploring historical places in the United States. All right, if you have any questions or comments, please post, chat, most importantly, subscribe so you don't miss anything. And uh, I'll keep it coming for you. I'd also like to say thank you for all my veterans, service members, current, previous, past, and um, Thank you for your dedication to this country. All right. Walking through this grass, I'm getting sticker briars on my feet. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. We'll talk later.